All right, today we have an interesting project I thought I'd embark on. We got a couple of rainy days here, and um, so we're going to work on a mouthpiece today. Not something that you should really do, <laughs> but I'm going to do it because I have some of the materials that are necessary to do it. Uh, like playing the instrument, it takes years to learn how to work on the mouthpieces and the horns, and I do not at all suggest doing any of this kind of work yourself. Uh, I also will say that if you have a primary mouthpiece that you play all the time, you should never let anyone work on that mouthpiece. It's okay to have it measured, but uh, a mouthpiece, when it's worked on, comes out quite a bit different. Um, we are going to add a baffle, or what the old guys used to call an insert, to this mouthpiece. And we'll talk a little bit about what it is and why. Um, there's only one vintage mouthpiece here, and it is this one. This is a 90s mouthpiece, current production. It is, a, or what was considered current production. It has an NY stamped on the shank, as you can see. Uh, it's about a seven star. This was my first tenor mouthpiece, and um, it played good for a long time. Now I don't really like it. Uh, and it has very little baffle at the very tip, uh, and then it has a low spot. And we're going to talk about the way that's cast and why it affects how these mouthpieces play. Um, the other mouthpiece is this one. This is the mouthpiece that we're going to work on. And here you can see very little baffle and actually like a divot down in there, um, which is just not enough. This is the modern vintage mouthpiece. This is a brand, pretty new current production mouthpiece you can get. But they're not that well made. They tried to cast in more baffle than this. Um, but this mouthpiece was refaced because... Uh, they're just very not really made very well at the factory. It's the, not their fault. I mean, it's just the nature of manufacturing that they can't really get the fine details. You'll see this has got a really thin tip rail, um, and so this is. A, but this has got the kind of baffle profile where you see there's a longer baffle there, and then it goes down into the chamber. And the refacer is able to produce that by moving removing material and bringing the tip this way and then doing all the refacing and they have to cut back the table uh, and that's how they're able to um, create a little more baffle material in these mouthpieces beyond the way they're cast but that takes a lot of experience and a lot of work uh, only a few people uh, in the world are really able to get to the point where they do really really good consistent work and it takes a long time um, I don't do that. I don't do any of it. Um, but I have some epoxy, and what we're going to do is we're going to put an insert into this mouthpiece. Uh, so this will be a multiple part series, um, so stick with me. I'll try and show as much of the process as I can. And uh, so stay tuned. We're going to take a closer look at these mouthpieces in this video, and then we'll talk at the end about the materials we're going to use to work on this one. All right. So well, this uh, tenor mouthpiece is the vintage link in the pile that we're looking at today. Uh, it's not in the best of condition. Uh, it's got the letter T stamped uh, ligature. It's got a cap goes with it that's all bent out of shape. Uh, this is an eBay find. Didn't pay a lot of money of it, but it's a basket case. Uh, and this has more more of the original baffle, as you can see here. Um, it is a USA stamped. Um, Florida Link or Early Babbitt. I, I'm not really, I think it's a small number. There's all kinds of theories of what makes these, uh, this is the smaller number, so this is technically a Florida. You can do a lot more research. I'm not going to talk a lot about that, um, but what I'm I want to show you is the amount of baffle on a vintage piece. And what we're looking at is, let me get something to point with here. We're looking at this area right here, you can see where the light shines off of it, and then the light goes away when it dumps down. That amount of material right there is your baffle, uh, and everybody likes different amounts. Uh, it happens to be significant with these old mouthpieces, as they generally have a little more, and it gives them a little more bite and a little more edge, which people like. Uh, this is the modern New York Link I was talking about before, Seven Star. And why this was made in the 90s this was made in the late 60s early 70s and if we roll it you can see the difference in the amount of baffle almost double in this mouthpiece than in this mouthpiece you can see that um, 
so that affects responsiveness it affects um, all kinds of things uh, I don't like a particularly bright mouthpiece myself um, but it's a part of why these play different there's also weight I usually I used to I did a video once I weighed these mouthpieces this is a little heavier uh, than this one this needs to be refaced it's a it's only a uh, it's a six but it actually measures a little small and it could use to be more open it could use this as a not a lot of really good tip material the the tip rail is not very nice so this is a candidate to be refaced and I played a really nice uh, no USA that I really wish I would bought sometimes I don't I don't I don't spring on a piece and I, I wish I'd bought it but you know you can't you can't just spend money on pieces over and over again I always end up playing on the same mouthpiece anyway so <laughs> that's kind of the deal uh, this is an interesting mouthpiece um, but that shows you the difference baffle some baffle only a little baffle um, let's see if we can see it looking this way so if we look at the two mouthpieces sorry we can see uh, that there's more material on our vintage mouthpiece if we look at it this way you can see where the baffle material sort of crests first on this mouthpiece so it's really it's really hard to film any of this um, and that can affect your playability this also has a bit of a larger chamber um, the floor which is the amount of material here can you see that so this has got a lot more material under the table here whereas this one is a little bit thinner uh, you can see those things. These are design aspects of these mouthpieces that affects how they play. Stay tuned. Now to look at the rubber mouthpieces, we can again see this is a the refaced current vintage production one, and then this is a 90s or so, maybe even 2000s uh, link. And again, we see that the baffle goes down about a half an inch and then on this one there's like a little bump and then it dives in you can see where there's just a big recess there's not a lot of material there um, and again I mean, there are other factors in this but let's roll it down and you can see right away on this mouthpiece that was refaced and designed frankly to have a little more baffle right away you could see that baffle material and on this one you don't see that material roll over until right at the end and it just you know doesn't make it play that great and so we're going to try to add some material here now i'm talking about in here where the mouthpiece sort of dumps down let's see if i could show you a profile yeah you can see it just goes shoop shoop and so we're going to add some epoxy in here and we're going to smooth it out so that it's a gradual transition and it's going to make the mouthpiece play different. I do not know how to do any facing work. There's not going to be any refacing or adjusting of this mouthpiece. I'm simply going to add material and file the material smooth. That's all I'm going to do. I don't know, but mouth, you know, mouthpiece refacing, you got to understand that takes years to learn how to do that. Um, a lot of error, a lot of trial, a lot of trust. Uh, between you and the players and learning how to do this stuff I don't, I don't know I, I'd rather play the instrument um, but in the old days that was how they did it you know the old guys needed to get more out of their mouthpieces and they would stick chewing gum in here you could get that dental wax which I don't like that stuff because it's really sticky um, but they had different things they would use to uh, to add material to make the mouthpieces more responsible Coltrane did it a lot of guys did it it was a known fact in fact I've seen a few vintage mouthpieces with um, the you know some sort of a weird insert in there I know a guy who played baritone uh, and he had an old master link mouthpiece which shouldn't have played at all but for him it was bright and powerful because there was a big insert in it and that's what we're gonna do with this so stay tuned for the next video where we will talk about materials and how how we're gonna go about doing this this is about adding an insert to a um, practice mouthpiece this is not a mouthpiece I play in fact it's not even the size I like uh, this is an eight star um, which I'm not even sure I have any reads I play a smaller mouthpiece which much harder to read so I might have to find some reads the other thing that we'll do is we'll play test this first to get an idea what it sounds like and then we'll do the work on it and then third we will play it after the work and see we might even do some adjusting uh, and do several play tests with this so this is going to be an ongoing project 
uh, with this uh, Funny Auto Link um, current production beater mouthpiece. I paid zero dollars for this. This was found somewhere and given to me. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try that. We got a nice couple of, a couple of days here. So the next video will be about materials and uh, planning for our process.